This adventure story begins by showing a goblin who was advancing deep into a dense forest. The goblin appeared quite terrifying, seemingly on a dangerous mission. An unknown force had summoned the goblin into the forest, where there stood a massive tree. The goblin kept moving toward this tree, which looked grand and majestic from within, though the entire area was shrouded in darkness. The truth was that inside this tree lived a dangerous creature known as the Lord of Darkness, who wanted to conquer all of humanity and the universe to gain control over them. We now hear the voice of the Lord of Darkness, saying, I want to become the most powerful being in this entire world, but my body cannot survive in sunlight. Therefore, I am forced to live in this darkness forever, which is a terrible curse for me. As a result, my powers are weakening, and I must increase them as soon as possible. In this pursuit, the Lord of Darkness had summoned someone to this place. At that moment, the same goblin who had been shown at the beginning arrived, implying that the Lord of Darkness had called the goblin here. The goblin bowed before him and said, What can I do for you? Whatever you command, I will fulfill it. The Lord of Darkness then shared an important piece of information with the goblin. I have sensed some powers around this entire forest that may exist in the body of some creature. I don't know who that creature is, but I want you to gather all the powers that will help me take control of the universe. The goblin was surprised to hear that such powers could indeed exist, ones that could restore the Lord of Darkness to his former strength. The goblin then asked his master, the Lord of Darkness, what these powers looked like or what kind of creature might possess them. The Lord of Darkness explained to the goblin, you will find a sharp symbol on its head and you will only be able to find it when you chase innocence for it will be filled with purity and cannot cause harm to anyone. The Lord of Darkness then tasked the goblin with bringing the creature that possessed the powers to him, so that the Lord of Darkness could consume them and recover his strength. Determined to heal his master, the goblin set off far and wide with his companions to find the creature. Meanwhile, on the other side of the forest, we are introduced to a beautiful princess named Lily, who was the princess of that entire region. She was visiting her friend NAL's house. Since NAL was busy with her work, Lily entered her house and began looking around. Suddenly, Princess Lily experienced a strange vision. While she was staring at a clock, she noticed that for a moment, all the clocks had stopped and everything around her had frozen in ice. But moments later, when her friend NAL called out to her, everything returned to normal. At that moment, Princess Lily couldn't understand whether these things were just a trick of her eyes or a warning of some dangerous incident. For now, she chose not to think too much about it and started talking to her friend NAL. NAL, who often praised Lily's beauty, remarked again, saying, Now that you're grown up, you should find a prince to marry. Princess Lily felt extremely shy about such things and quickly left the house. Lily wandered deep into the forest calling out for a man named Jack. But nearby, we see that the dangerous goblin, along with some of his companions, was watching her closely. The goblins had the ability to sense innocence, and they had caught a strong scent of it from this area, which led them to keep a keen eye on Lily. After a while, as Lily continued calling for Jack, a tribal man named Jack appeared. It became clear that Jack had a deep affection for Princess Lily. He wanted to confess his love to her, but he lacked the courage, as Lily was a very wealthy princess and he was just a simple tribal man. Jack never found the bravery to express his feelings, yet he always did things to make Princess Lily happy. Lily, too, enjoyed Jack's company very much. At this point, Jack suggested showing something to Princess Lily that was incredibly beautiful and would surely make her very happy. After walking a short distance, Jack revealed two stunning horses to Lily. These horses were unlike any she had ever seen before. Each had a horn on its forehead, just like a unicorn. Lily was mesmerized by their beauty. Meanwhile, lurking in the shadows, the goblin named Blex and his companions were watching closely. Blex had created a weapon laced with poison, which they planned to use to incapacitate the unicorns. Their goal was to capture them and present them to the Lord of Darkness, knowing that this would help him regain his power. The goblins positioned themselves carefully, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. Lily, captivated by the unicorns, 
was eager to touch one. Jack encouraged her to approach them gently, explaining that unicorns were very delicate creatures. Slowly, Princess Lily began walking toward the two unicorns. Suddenly, one of the unicorns rushed toward Lily, causing her to freeze in fear. She closed her eyes and crouched down, terrified. But to her surprise, the unicorn stopped right in front of her and seemed to feel safe in her presence. Relieved, Lily gently touched the unicorn, feeling its soft fur and marveling at its beauty. This was her first time being so close to such a magical creature, and both Lily and the unicorn felt a deep sense of safety and joy. However, in that very moment, Blex fired the poisoned weapon at one of the unicorns. The dart hit the unicorn's body, and the creature, frightened, fled into the forest along with the other unicorn. Lily, startled and upset, ran back to Jack. On the other side, the goblins immediately started chasing the unicorns, knowing that the poison would eventually cause one of them to collapse, making it easier to capture. As Lily recounted her thrilling experience of meeting the unicorns to Jack, she mentioned how happy it had made her and expressed that she had decided to find a prince for herself. She then removed a ring from her finger and threw it into the nearby river. Turning to Jack, she said, Whoever finds this ring and brings it back to me, I will marry him. Jack was filled with energy and excitement, as he had always dreamed of marrying Lily himself. Now, with this challenge, he was determined to be the one to find the ring and win her heart. Jack, determined to spend his entire life with Princess Lily, immediately jumped into the river without a second thought to retrieve the precious ring for her. Once he had the ring, he could marry Lily and live happily with her. Jack dived into the water without hesitation and began searching for the ring. Meanwhile, in the forest, the unicorn that had been poisoned was shown. The poison had begun to take effect, and the unicorn, weakened, collapsed at a spot in the forest. Soon after, the goblin Blix arrived with his group, tasked with taking the unicorn's horn for the Lord of Darkness. Without delay, Blix drew his sword and cut off the unicorn's horn, which he quickly took. The unicorn died on the spot because its life force was contained in its horn, which was on its head. The horn held immense powers, which the Lord of Darkness had been searching for. Blix and his goblins, taking the unicorn's horn, immediately set off for the Lord of Darkness as that was their mission. Meanwhile, Princess Lily was extremely worried because Jack had jumped directly into the river, and for some unknown reason, the entire river began to freeze over. Although Jack hadn't found the ring yet, he kept searching, motivated by his desire to marry Princess Lily. Lily was shouting in concern for Jack, fearing for his life. After struggling for a while, Jack managed to break through the ice and come up to the surface, saving his life. However, he noticed that Princess Lily was no longer there. She had gone somewhere else. Frightened, Princess Lily had gone to her friend, whose name was Nell. She noticed that the temperature had dropped drastically, and people were beginning to freeze solid. When Lily reached her friend, she discovered that Nell had also frozen to death. Lily's eyes fell on the clock, which had stopped exactly the way she had seen in her earlier visions. However, Lily had no idea that all these visions would turn into reality, and that she was catching a glimpse of a future event. If Princess Lily had truly known that this was going to happen, she would have warned everyone in advance. But Lily didn't pay much attention to her vision, and now everything she had sensed earlier had come to pass. Now, we see that the goblins, including Blix, have arrived right outside the house where Princess Lily was hiding. Lily also saw them approaching, so she immediately found a safe place to hide. Blix, carrying the severed unicorn horn, entered the house and began to perform some magic on a strange-looking clock. All of this was related to a ritual in which the unicorn's powers would be transferred into the horn. Blix kept repeating that it was a great opportunity for them, having killed the unicorn, and now they would restore the Lord of Darkness's powers and rule over the entire universe. Another goblin told Blix that it was fortunate that Princess Lily touched the unicorn, giving Blix the perfect chance to attack and knock it unconscious. Princess Lily, hiding in a corner of the house, overheard their conversation. She began to blame herself, thinking that if she hadn't touched the unicorn, the goblin wouldn't have had the opportunity to attack it. 
She also started blaming Jack, wondering why he had shown her the unicorn and sent her there, leading her to touch it. Lily even began to suspect that Jack might have been in league with the goblins, hunting the unicorn alongside them. Overwhelmed with guilt, Princess Lily started crying, feeling responsible for everything that had happened. Meanwhile, we see Jack, still covered in ice, but he soon regained consciousness because an elf named Gump had arrived to help him. A group of similar elves or dwarves gathered around Jack, helping him wake up and regain his strength. Jack is completely shocked, wondering what is happening to him and why the weather has suddenly changed, with snow starting to fall. Nearby, a firefly named Luna has been silently observing the entire situation. When Jack asks what is going on, Gump, the elf, shouts at him, accusing him of being responsible. Jack insists that all he did was tell Lily to touch the unicorn. Upon hearing this, all the elves start shouting because no mortal human is supposed to touch a unicorn. It's considered a bad omen, and they believe that's why all these unnatural events are happening. What they don't yet realize is that the goblins have already taken one of the two unicorns. Jack and the elves quickly reach the remaining unicorn, discovering that it is unconscious and on the brink of death because the goblins have cut off its horn. The horn is now in the possession of the goblins, and it will only be used by the Lord of Darkness. The elves blame Jack entirely, saying that if he hadn't told Lily to touch the unicorn, none of this would have happened. Now, no matter what, it is Jack's responsibility to retrieve the unicorn's horn from the Lord of Darkness, as only by restoring the horn can the unicorn be brought back to life. Jack realizes the gravity of his mistake and agrees to help them. Gump, along with some of his companions, leads Jack toward the cave of the Lord of Darkness. Meanwhile, another elf named Tom stays behind to protect the two unicorns, vowing to guard them at all costs. As Jack and the elves continue their journey, they come across a cave. Gump tells Jack and Luna, the small firefly, to go inside. As they venture deeper into the cave, Jack notices an array of powerful swords, armor, and a large collection of golden jewelry, all of immense value during that time. However, at that moment, the magical firefly, Luna, suddenly transforms into a human form. Luna, now in human form, tells Jack, this is our secret place, but you must not tell anyone about it. We're only here to take the sword and armor so that you can fight the Lord of Darkness and retrieve the horn. Once we get the horn back, both our unicorns will come back to life. Jack, understanding the gravity of the situation, silently dons the armor and takes the sword, fully preparing himself for the battle against the Lord of Darkness. Meanwhile, Princess Lily is shown with the goblins, overhearing their conversations. The goblins are discussing their plan to take the horn from the second unicorn as well. They believe that the Lord of Darkness can only become truly powerful once all the unicorns in the world are killed, and they can use their horns to give him immense strength. Their strategy was to kill the unicorns to fulfill this dark plan. Lily, having learned all this, realizes the dire situation and rushes off to protect the second unicorn. As Lily approaches, she finds Tom, the elf, who is guarding the second unicorn. When Tom sees her, he assumes she's an enemy and tries to attack. However, Lily warns him that the goblins are on their way to capture the second unicorn, and they must work together to stop them. Unfortunately, Tom doesn't trust her and accuses her of being a foe. Just then, the goblins arrive, shooting an arrow that knocks Tom unconscious. They quickly capture both Lily and the second unicorn using a large net, intending to present them to the Lord of Darkness. After some time, Jack and the other elves arrive at the scene, only to find that the second unicorn is missing. However, Tom is still alive and manages to explain everything to them. How the goblins have kidnapped Lily and the unicorn and taken them to the other side of the forest. Upon hearing this, Jack is filled with determination and sets off with the elves to chase down the goblins and rescue Lily and the unicorn. Jack and the elves, after traveling for some time, finally arrive at the castle where the Lord of Darkness and his followers reside. The goblins have brought both the unicorn and Lily to this place. As Jack and the elves prepare to enter the castle, they are confronted by a powerful witch guarding the entrance, tasked with preventing any intruders from entering. The witch immediately attacks Jack, 
but he is not one to easily back down. Using the enchanted sword and armor given to him by the elves, Jack quickly engages the witch in battle and manages to defeat her. Jack is astonished by his own success, realizing that the magical items are the true source of his newfound abilities. With the witch defeated, Jack and the elves proceed into the castle. However, as they venture further, the floor of the castle gives way, and they fall into a tunnel below. The temperature in the tunnel is extremely low, and they find themselves in a dark area where the Lord of Darkness resides. Jack figures out that they are trapped behind a door, and the key is on the other side. He immediately thinks of Luna, the Firefly, who might be able to retrieve the key. However, Luna is furious with Jack for revealing their secret. She had specifically warned him not to disclose it, and now she is very angry. Luna transforms into her human form and, taking on the appearance of Lily, pleads with Jack to kiss her so she can be freed from the place forever. Although Jack is temporarily tempted by her appearance, he realizes that this is not truly Lily and refuses, which prevents Luna from gaining her freedom. Instead, Luna reluctantly agrees to help them find a way out. With Luna's help, they manage to retrieve the key and open the door. They make their way to the main hall of the Lord of Darkness's castle. From a distance, they see the goblins, the unicorn, and Lily standing right in front of the Lord of Darkness. The Lord of Darkness's voice echoes through the hall, revealing his feelings. He has taken a strong liking to Lily and wishes to be with her. The Lord of Darkness, seeing Lily's reluctance to join him, decides to use a necklace to control her. As Lily hesitates, realizing it could be a trap, she puts the necklace aside. However, an eerie figure soon approaches her from behind. This figure, not clearly visible, starts dancing with Lily, and in the next moment, Lily finds herself dressed in a costume and dancing along. It becomes clear that these events were orchestrated by the Lord of Darkness. The Lord of Darkness, revealing his true form, offers Lily a deal. Join him, and they will rule the universe together. Lily, determined to resist the forces of evil, responds by agreeing to his demand under one condition. She wants permission to kill the remaining unicorn. The Lord of Darkness, amused and pleased, finds this request convenient, as it aligns with his own plans. He laughs heartily and feels that his task just became easier. Meanwhile, Jack, observing the situation from a distance, realizes he needs to act carefully. He learns that the Lord of Darkness is highly vulnerable to sunlight, which weakens him significantly. Jack devises a plan to use this weakness to his advantage and save Lily and the remaining unicorns. Jack knows he must act quickly and strategically. He prepares to confront the Lord of Darkness, planning to exploit the fear of sunlight to weaken him. With this crucial information, Jack sets out to rescue Lily and ensure the safety of the unicorns while making sure to use the sunlight to their advantage. So, Jack, using his intellect, devised a plan with all the elves. He gathered a lot of reflecting mirrors that would reflect the sunlight into the cave. Jack and all the elves set up these mirrors at different locations so that the light would enter and target a specific spot. In other words, they wanted to defeat the Lord of Darkness with the help of the reflected sunlight. The placements were all done, and the mirrors were perfectly positioned. They just had to wait for the sunlight to arrive. Meanwhile, Lily was shown moving forward with the Lord of Darkness to kill the unicorn. The elves began to think that Lily had also become a devil like the Lord of Darkness. Therefore, all the elves wanted to protect only the unicorn and were about to fire arrows at Lily. However, Jack trusted Lily and did not ask anyone to fire. Lily, with the sword in her hand and approaching the unicorn to kill it, freed the unicorn instead of attacking it. She broke the unicorn's chains, allowing it to escape. Upon discovering this, the Lord of Darkness became very angry. Before he could attack Lily, Jack jumped at him and began fighting. Although the Lord of Darkness was furious and tried to kill Jack with his dangerous powers, Jack, being very brave, managed to evade all attacks and move to a position where he couldn't be touched. He then instructed his elf companions to direct all the light into the cave. The elves aligned the mirrors in one direction, causing the light to reflect continuously into the cave. The light was completely directed at the Lord of Darkness. 
Due to the overwhelming light on his body, the Lord of Darkness became very weak. He couldn't endure it at all. Taking advantage of this opportunity, Jack used his sword to cut off the Lord of Darkness's horn. After defeating him, Jack threw the Lord of Darkness into a realm that directly led to Hell. So, the Lord of Darkness was now completely trapped in Hell, from which he could not escape. Jack quickly went to rescue Princess Lily and, with all the elves, made his way out, as the entire palace and cave were beginning to collapse. Jack, having resolved everything with the help of the elves, then showed us the forest where Lily was unconscious. Jack jumped into the river and, after a lot of effort, managed to find Lily's ring, which he brought back to her. Upon regaining consciousness, Lily was very happy to see Jack. She told him that she had a strange dream filled with many dangerous things. However, Lily had no idea that what she had dreamed was actually reality, in which Jack had won. Lily had promised that whoever found her ring would be her partner, so she put the ring on Jack's finger and chose him as her companion. Thus, Jack and Lily would marry and spend their lives together. Their happiness was beyond measure. We then see all the elves in the forest, who were very happy. As they moved forward, the two unicorns were visible from behind. One of the unicorns, whose horn had been broken, was now completely healed and recovered. With both unicorns alive, prosperity returned to the entire forest. The unicorns maintained nature well, and without them, the balance of nature would be disrupted. All the elves and unicorns thanked Jack for his contribution. Jack then set out on a long journey with Princess Lily to spend his life with her. Thus, our adventure story ends here.